Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Big Show Live here at Fan Expo Chicago. Um, nice to have everybody here to talk some pro wrestling today. Moving on, I'm your host, Blake. Moving on, my co host. First of all, my regular co host, the man, myth, legend, Mark Dad. How you doing? Hey, doing well. And my beautiful wife, who was actually in these seats earlier talking about her book, I Know I Am. Andy, welcome to the show. Hello. Yes. Um, if, for those um, here, she's a little tired. We've been going all day. But this is our last panel of, the, of our day, so I'm actually looking forward to this. But we are here to talk some pro wrestling. We were actually here back in October, me and Mark. Yes, we and were. And we were um, talking. Uh, we had Nick Hosman here from Wrestling Inc., and we yes. were catching up. So we're going to catch up from there. I think we're going to talk about things from there. But that day, we were talking a lot about AEW. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we were joking around about Tony Khan. Yes. And whether or not, is he doing too much? Is he trying to do too much? So that's where we're starting here. We're going to start here because the last time we were, last time in Chicago, there was the Forbidden Door show with New Japan. Mm -hmm. And then they're trying to do Ring of Honor. And we're trying to do a whole bunch of stuff. So, honey, what do you think? Is AEW trying to do too much to bring in people? Is their roster too big? What's going on with them right now? I think with the sheer amount of talent that they have, that there is so much being underutilized. And some of the talent is being overutilized. <laughs> I can go with that. Um, I think that if anything, there could be some kind of a clear division as like WWE has a Raw and a SmackDown and you can even say an, an NXT. And I think AEW could take a lesson from that in order to um, utilize their talent properly. Yeah, I can go with that. I almost feel like sometimes the show goes too much. too much going on in one show. Then you just cram way too much in two or three hours every week. But at the same time, I'd rather have that versus a lot of fluff that True. we can say that it has well, been I, on. I can honestly say SmackDown this week, literally nothing happened for the first time. <laughs> literally nothing happened. I'd rather it be jam-packed and at the end wonder what I've watched versus watching three hours of television that amounted to maybe 15 minutes of <laughs> actual content. Good. Here's the thing with Tony Khan. Tony Khan is also a fan of pro wrestling. So he looks at it through the fans' eyes, too, in planning all this. Here's the thing. Everyone's saying, why doesn't Dynamite go three hours? There's a reason why it doesn't go three hours. Rampage is there. The rampage is for Because basically <laughs> the two-hour format works. If you get to that third hour, it's like you're losing viewers. You're kind of going, God, is this over? Is this over? Can I change the channel now? But I think the thing that everyone forgets is that there is AEW Dark and Dark Elevation. And instead right. of using those as essentially squash matches, I really feel like they could utilize those shows to bring forth some storylines or to continue some and actually give that them content versus just squash match after squash match after squash match. And it almost feels like it's just there to pad records. It's not really a show to watch. <laughs> it was just, they're doing that when we were in person. We went to the Dynamite a few weeks ago, and those felt like matches that were just there to pad the records. It, it definitely the is, and I think that's use, utilizing those formats incorrectly. And yes, it gives local talent a, a chance to get on a big stage, but in reality, nobody is really paying attention to that local talent. And you know the they're Let's going to the yeah. the mm -hmm. you know lose. So right. I would rather them make it a little more unpredictable and utilize the shows to further storylines. But the thing also, when they're saying that they're top heavy in talent, you have to also look at all the injuries that are happening and going, That's true. well, mm -hmm. at least they have enough talent to cover the holes. Yes, but there's still people that aren't, aren't being used properly even though they've been able to do that. In fact, I'll just bring up the Rose Division. We talk about it all the time. We talk yes. about it all the time. Um, right now, if you're not Thunder Rosa or Tony Storm, you're not really even on TV right now. Um, what's funny about it is, it's a big conversation over on Wrestling Inc. all the time. One of the hosts over there brings it up that the women's match is always at 9.30. Mm -hmm. Always at 9.30. It's maybe five minutes. And they're gone. Mm -hmm. As a women's wrestling fan my entire life, it is so frustrating because I feel like we take one step forward and two gigantic leaps back. Um, and a perfect example of this is Ruby Soho. She has all of the talent in the world. She has the charisma. She has the crowd behind her. We she has the music. They have she, the band and everything. Mm -hmm. But a rock star. She's a rock she star. is the epitome of being underutilized. She is being a pawn right now in this whole Chris Jericho, Eddie Kingston thing, and instead of being part of a title picture, 
And it's just, it's beyond frustrating that they push the same three women, and we know Britt Baker would be in there if she wasn't currently dealing with an injury. Mm -hmm. And it, it's just, they need to make the women's division as legitimate as they have talent for. You know, and I know like, we have two titles. That's good, at least. And we have, but Jade Cartel is... TBS championship, and that's fine. I have no problem with that. At least she's doing something with the belt and making the belt legitimate. But you're right, and there's not enough women to get pushes. Not enough women to get on TV. Since Thunder Rose has been the champion, you've noticed Almost that sometimes. Almost uh, that. <laughs> you notice that the women that they put against her, Serena Deeb, um, the other one, um, well, Lila Rose. She was yeah, Nyla Rose. Well, Nyla Rose feels like the woman. They always joke in the men's division that once you win your championship, you get to face Lance Archer. If you win the women's championship, you get to face Nyla Rose. I you feel know, like that's the joke right now. Which, uh, Maria Shafir. It seems oh, like geez. they're all getting recycled, and I don't see anyone new that's thrown into the mix. Well, Athena is feuding with Jade, so that's a good thing at least. Athena and so, Chris Stratlander are fighting with Jade. So here's the thing, and, and now that Chris Stratlander has broken away from best friends and is kind of now focusing on the women's division, why don't you have a match against her? Oh, they're working on, at least they're feuding. At least they're feuding. I mean, Jade and Athena and I mean, Taylor you know, doing something. give her the shot. Give her the chance. I mean, don't overlook somebody that you've got that can get a big pop, put fans in the seats, and make the division exciting to watch. But can Chris Statlander do that? Is she strong enough? Yeah, I believe no, she, she is. is. I don't know she is. It's it's just nobody gives her the chance to I mean, show I, what she can do. I would like to see her. I don't think she's there yet. I, I think I, she has the potential to be there, but I don't think right now. She needs to establish herself more as her own person, well, away from the alien gimmick, away from the best friends before she can do that. And she... Well, and that's what she's doing now. Yes, but I, I I agree with you, but I'm just saying I don't think she's ready there yet. I like what they're doing with her and Athena, but I think that between the two, I think Athena would be the one that they need to push. Mm. Well, um, I will say one thing. We talk about AEW. Are there too many championships on TV right now when it comes to AEW? Are there too many? Because you bring in, you have all the AEW belts. You have Pac, who's not even defending his belt on TV. He's <laughs> defending his, his belt over on, like, indie shows. And then we have the Ring of Honor belts all over the place. They are bringing New Japan belts for a while. Are there too many belts on TV right now? Yes, only because they're only doing it on Rampage and Dynamite. Again, if they were utilizing their other two shows as they could be, I think that then they could have more of a spread out. I also think that when ROH starts up as their own I hope they do. entity, I really hope they do. and I hope they do, I feel like they obvious, those belts need to go to that show. But And at some point, it becomes a participation trophy. It becomes a ribbon. Everyone gets a, a, a no, title for yeah. showing up. And that's just, uh, unfortunately, not how the real world works. I would love for it to. <laughs> I mean, here's here's you kind of look at, okay? Now the Young Bucks are coming into play. Again. 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 But so, yeah, at, least, at least we're getting new teams. But, but, but here, the, here's the thing. You want to be yourself relevant and see what you can do? Go back to ROH and go feud against the Briscoes one more time. Well, FTR is facing the Briscoes. That's happening. I know that. <laughs> but I mean, if you want to make yourselves relevant and still current, go back and do a feud with the Briscoes. Or Tony's going to bring the Briscoes to them and have them slug it out. I'll be shocked if I ever see the Briscoes on AEW television. I'm not going to lie. My, my other issue ever. is that with Punk out of the picture, instead of letting him relinquish his title, like, to be completely honest, he should have, we had to go through this whole interim thing all over again, which means we're going to inevitably deal with two title belts. There's going to be the champ champ thing again. Just l let the man relinquish his title, name a new champion, and down the road he can fight for his championship again. I understand that the whole situation sucked, but that's reality. But I understand why they did it, though. They did it like they're trying to act like UFC. Or they do interim championship after injuries. But I think it's different because in the UFC, you're only fighting once or twice or three times yeah. a year. You're not doing weekly shows what? and defending the belt every week and doing stuff like that. You know, they're not doing that. But at least they put it on John Moxley. What? And he's getting to actually be a fan, being a champion in front of the fans for the first two, time ever. 
to mm-hmm. Punk's credit, he went to Tony Khan and said, "Here, here you go. Here's the but belt. I'm injured." He, he, he did. He did. <laughs> there, uh, that part is true. And Tony said no. But, but my biggest because, thing with Tony because Khan here's is the he thing. needs to separate he, the fanboy from the businessman. It's and hard. Sometimes with, he doesn't it, do it, that. At times, it's hard with Tony. Obviously. But, but the thing that he looked at with Punk is. He became a new champ, and within a matter of days, it's like, well, there you go. I but how many injury. times has that happened to other people before, and they've given up their belts? Finn Balor. Exactly. Mm. But then you got to look at it where he was. Where he, where he, where he what was. Is the in, what, in, is the in, in, what is the difference in, between Punk losing his belt because of injury or Finn Balor losing his belt because of injury? Literally the, or, the night he wins the belt. Literally the, the night he wins the belt. The organization. That's it's, a whole, it's, that's it's, the, it's the organization because here's the thing. Finn was on top, and then for some reason... He got hurt. He well, got be, hurt. Besides, besides getting hurt. They put him down as a mid-carter, and he spent mm-hmm. all the time as a mid-carter. So hurt. that tells me that Vince has no faith in Finn Balor. The, the, fact, the, the, the fact of the matter is, is we need to stop treating mid-card as a punishment. Or the bad word. Really. As a bad word. There is nothing used to be, wrong. The mid-card used to be... Headline shows. Exactly. The There's shows nothing wrong with being a mid carter. There's nothing wrong with holding an intercontinental belt, the U.S. belt. There's nothing wrong with that. It's not a punishment. It doesn't make you a lesser wrestler. In fact, there are credit. In either credit, they are trying to make the TNT championship up there like a regular main title. Exactly. To their and and I, I think we forget that all of the people that we once considered or have considered great wrestlers, a Shawn Michaels, a Stone Cold, a Rock, they all quote unquote started as mid carters. They and they were fantastic. And that is why they were were able to elevate themselves and right. when you think Shawn Michaels I think Intercontinental Belt I think the latter match with the Razor Ramon I don't necessarily think the boyhood dream first obviously that comes to mind but I think he elevated the Intercontinental Belt to be what it is as a matter of fact when they were they with someone wins the IC belt they always say the belt held by Stone Cold Steve Austin Hall of Famers and Shawn Michaels they always say that well, when they win the belts now lately it feels like here's and I'll, I'll WWE right now, I, I, I look at it as being they're going through a restructuring phase. So you're not sure who on any given night is going to be on top and who's no, going to go who's on top. You know who's on top. Roman Reigns. Well, it's Roman Reigns. We know that. Well, Everyone I mean, knows that. It's common sense. Because my thing is, Finn has come back, but I think he's came back because he's trying to have Damian Priest look good. Okay, but. It, it, I don't. I know how we got to Finn, but at the end of the day, AEW needs to have a little more distribution between the shows, and we need to figure out how. If we're if you have that many people, not everyone can be the top guy every night. So you're going to have to understand that these people are going to have to be on dark, and they're going to have to be on dark elevation, and have those matches mean something. Otherwise, people aren't going to watch them because I can guarantee you that the only time I've ever seen AEW dark are the shows that they've taped at our at our um, dynamite. I can actually agree with you on that because that's the only time we ever ever watched the show. I I tried, I tried to watch it, but I can't do it. So well, here's the thing. At the end we, of the day, there yeah. are only so many hours in the day, and we, you've already got Monday, you've already got Tuesday, you've already got Wednesday, you've already got Friday, and that's not including pretty much. Impact Wrestling, New Japan, like all the other shows. If you watch Power, all oh of the wrestling that there were in the day, you have to give me a reason to want to watch it, and AEW isn't doing that with Dark or Dark Elevation, when in reality they have the breadth of talent to do so. Wrong. I was saying, not you're, wrong. You're not wrong, but I think they're putting more money into Rampage and Dynamite. Oh, no, no. They're not putting more money in. They're getting paid. Oh. Those shows are getting paid to do but those shows. What I'm lot. saying is you're doing the dark tapings. Instead of doing squash matches, give me matches with actual wrestlers that I know. I mean, I'll, I'll compare. You, you, back when they used to go to back in Raw and SmackDown, they used to do heat tapings. Those are real matches. Those weren't squad matches. I mean, exactly. Heat, right? yes. You know, if you're going to have the shows, if you're going to spend the time to, to give out entertainment mm-hmm. at least make it quality entertainment because i can I, if i if i wanted to see a squash match mm-hmm. i could you know i could what's the difference between <coughs> seeing a person like a sierra mm-hmm. at a bcw show mm-hmm. where she's actually being giving uh, getting a push and mm-hmm. actually showing her talent versus jobbing to a serena deeb and whoa, a mercedes whoa, martinez whoa, whoa, whoa. it's the same thing I know, but I've been told not to use the word it's jobbing. Job. It's jobbing. Let's just be honest. It's jobbing. I was, uh, it I was told by a 
certain someone. It's that's not. Frank, it's, it's not. Told you, doesn't matter. Doesn't mean you can't say. Well, it. I'm just saying because <laughs> I used to just no. You don't use Jabber. But use journeyman. I mean, we we've all come to this agreement. So why don't but, we? Yeah, let's move on. Uh, oh, uh, you brought up WWE, and <laughs> you brought up WWE, and we'll get to the elephant in the room at the end. I'm not going to bring that up at the beginning because oh, I do want to. We'll talk about that at the end. Why but, did he make you sign a non-disclosure too? No, I just want to save it for the end. Oh, okay. <laughs> I just want to save it for the end. <laughs> but um. We talked about you talked about who's on top in mm -hmm. WWE. Yeah. And if you watched the first twenty minutes of SmackDown last night, I don't know why you did because there was nothing going on. But Roman Reigns and the Usos are the number one. Okay. I have no problem with them being on the top. I love the bloodline of the okay. faction. I have an issue with Roman not being on television ever. It That's is, my issue. <laughs> the bloodline has run its course. I am so done with the bloodline being shoved down my throat. It's time for some new I'm, faces. Okay, so I'm going to take what you said, but I'm going to take it to a different level. Go for it. I don't have a problem with the bloodline. I have a problem with the bloodline controlling the show and having all of the gold. Again, you have so much talent. And I'm not just talking about Raw and SmackDown. I'm talking about NXT. NXT. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it, it's literally... It, it's ridiculous to have someone hold the belt for that long and not utilize any of this untapped talent. Yeah, I have no issue with Roman holding one belt for a long time, especially if you want to push it. But having both belts is ridiculous. It's it, it's absolutely ridiculous, and it's it's why. And I'll take it, your example, okay? The match between Roman and Riddle, okay? Which, by the way, should have been on Money in the Bank. Okay. <laughs> yes. We all know Riddle's a workhorse, and he's made himself very relevant in the top echelon, whether it's with Randy or by himself. Right. Is he really a part of the top echelon? Um, did you out the crowd? Yes, yes. He is. yes. <laughs> He's he gets a big pop but the minute have been in the arena, he walks down that ramp. People have been in the arena. Riddle's treated like a, a conquering hero practically when he walks in the building. It feels like in the building. In the building. Hence the 420 T-shirts. Mm -hmm. But he's he, apparently he's more popular than I come across on TV. In okay. Person, in person. So he's more popular. You know, you're, you're pushing him in the singles direction. He's got all the talent and charisma to hold that belt, to put fans in the seat, to basically have fans get that big pop and buy merchandise because that's what it's all about. I think also the issue here is that the SummerSlam made a change. Because Cody was supposed to be in the main event. It was supposed to be Cody versus Roman. Cody got hurt. And now it's Rock again. And that's an issue. I have an issue with that. <laughs> I think that WWE's biggest issue is that they don't necessarily have enough talent that they can move around like an AEW. And it's I think- It's kind of their own fault though. It's kind of their own fault. The biggest example of that that I can think of recently is Rhea Ripley. She got injured and they had to randomly find someone and- And the only reason they even Melly got the shot was because of the Money in the Bank match. Because all the women were in the Money in the Bank match and they don't have enough women on the roster. Well, when you put all of your eggs in one basket, you have to go back to old reliable. Mm -hmm. And at some point, as Carmella, I would be insulted to know that I'm only good enough to be in a title match if the flavor of the week is injured. That's makes me worried about Liv Morgan. And then everyone's excited. And she won the belt. She won the belt. I don't think it's lasting longer than maybe SummerSlam at the most. No, mm -hmm. and, and that's very unfortunate. And, you know, now with there potentially only being three horsewomen instead of four, I'm hoping that that leaves an opportunity for women but i highly highly doubt it because it just means that we're gonna go we're gonna add ronda rousey in as the new potential fourth horse woman i'm just my issue with wwe mm. is i have seen the same stuff over and over and over and just regurgitated in different mm -hmm. ways you've been saying that for years though you've but, been saying it for years there's nothing here's, new here's, for you it's just a matter of time before charlotte flair comes back and she takes everything oh over my again God. we said it on the show last week we said that last week yes and you guys yelled at me you guys yelled at me for that last week, but I said it last week. I, I, I did not yell at you. I, no, you I, did, but they did. Yes. They did. <laughs> no, it, because it, I jokingly said, "Watch no. Charlotte comes back and beats Liv Morgan at SummerSlam." No. I said that as a joke. So here's the mm. thing: WWE has created their own monster with the Bloodline and with Roman. So now, how do you kill the monster? What do you have, Brock? Take the belts? No, no. It's as simple as promoting the talent that they have. Well, and separate the belts. That helps. Separate the belts and really work on building up new talent and allowing them to take over. And I don't know if it's ego. I don't know if 
Vince really thinks that this is what the fans want. But again, that th- we'll bring the elephant in the room out here. Bring it up. Mm-hmm. He yet. needs to go. I gotta say, Vince McMahon, we, it broke while we were actually on the way to the con on Friday that um, more stories came out. There's more news out there about hush money and sexual harassment and everything else with Vince McMahon. But uh, also, and I cannot believe he's still uh, too to the uh, creative. Can, but, but, can we just? Yeah, go ahead. And, every aspect of life whether it be the white house or wwe we need to stop letting elderly white men control our lives uh, like uh. they <laughs> <laughs> point of order here point of order you're elderly hispanic man you're cool different okay <laughs> but i'm I just, just saying to make sure. it, it's 70 some year old white 70, men are controlling <laughs> every aspect of our lives and it's got to stop because they're out of the touch of reality here, here's the thing you know why it is the way it is, especially with Vince, it's because... You want to die in the chair? <laughs> <laughs> Women... He might die in jail. Here. Fair. He may, not, he may not be attractive, but he has some sort of charisma, and of course the money is very lucrative, and that's why women flack to him, because he's all telling them the same thing. <laughs> I'll make you famous. Okay, okay, okay. No, no, no. I'm going to let her have this one. <laughs> Okay. Uh, look. In no way, shape, or form, yes. I think that any of these women actually wanted to be with him. I don't even think Linda wanted to be with him. <laughs> so, we, first of all, well, that's ridiculous. Well, and well. how much of this was him forcing himself on people? I've heard a couple of rumors about it. Yeah. 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 And I've heard him sending unsolicited pictures. Uh-huh. I've heard him giving unsolicited advances. And in that case, you're just throwing money at a problem, which, again, is an issue that we have with, let me just add the word, rich old white men there you go oh, okay <laughs> there it is <laughs> rich white men with privilege yeah and at the end of the day if this would be anyone else we wouldn't even be having this conversation because he would already be in jail a- according to Lydia's so, article from wall street and journal at least that least <clears throat> wouldn't be yes but at the very least but at the very least as he he is so out of touch that he will show up the next day on television <laughs> for no that apparent that reason laugh. and that made me laugh. It's just so that he can show off the fact that he has the privilege enough to have that opportunity so at the end of the day the changes no changes will be made until he is out of power and oh. he won't be out of power until he dies or he's forced to well, so we can only hope that one of them happens actually, okay. from what i'm hearing because this came from the wrestling this morning and the only way to force him out because he has all the voting power is to have like nbc universal or Fox, or something like that. So Netflix really pulled okay, out. You so know what yeah, and Netflix at this pulled point, out of his documentary. at this point, NBC, Fox, it, it, they gotta do something. Why Peacock. is no one doing well, anything? Yeah. And it, it's just, it's literally life imitating art here. Scary. Again, scary, no actually. one is stopping anyone it's, from. It, it, it's basically cu- causing a big cut on the company, and you can't stop the what bleeding. The tweet I saw yesterday was. What a shocker that a man who portrayed himself as a sexual predator on TV for 20 years is actually the sexual predator. Yeah. <laughs> who saw that one coming? You know, and, and here, here's the thing. The reason why Vince removed himself and stepped down is no, because... No, step it, back. Now step down. Well, the wording is important. Is basically to try to take some of the heat off the company and, and have someone else move in in a creative direction. So far, that has not happened. What's interesting is I have to say step back, not step down. Because if I step down, then Stephanie McMahon would not be the interim CEO. She'd be the CEO. That's just, that's just the word of that I, way on purpose. I, I, so I have a, when, yeah. and when inevitably he gets cleared of this because that's going to be what happens because that's what happens. Oh, really? No, 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 people, no, no. I mean, it made the point that Wall Street Journal is very good at getting Here's, these people but, out. But the real question is, is are he and Stephanie going to have a match to figure out who the actual the CEO is? The yeah. rematch. <laughs> you mean, mean the, who the o- actual yeah. owner is? Well, the rematch from and, and 2003. Then, and then you have <laughs> Triple H as a special referee? Yes, yeah. but at the end of the day, things need to change. And I think that you need to stop the bleeding 
with Vince. Will that happen? I will be interested to see what happens. But do at the end of the day, things need to change, and they need to stop pushing the same talent over only, and over and over again. The only way that this will end is someone has to buy out Vince, period. And right now, buy out isn't even a top thing right now. Well, I will move on to, speaking of new talent, let's jump over to NXT, because we watch the show every week. I'm not going to lie. Yep. Could be pleasure at this point. I enjoy it. It's silly. You turn your brain off. Fun. But if you, let me ask you, honey, because you watch the show every week, religiously with me, who do you see coming up to the main roster sooner than later? Like, I could see a Braun Breaker. I could see a Cameron Grimes. I could even see a Tiffany Stratton because he fits the personality. I could see people bring him up. But what do you think? I, I think that a lot of the NXT talents that are in the main event scene could go up any day and they could make some real impact. Um, but again, we're kind of regurgitating the same people over and over in NXT. So I think maybe it's time to just shake everything up. I do like what they're doing with Apollo Crews, bringing him back down to NXT. Agreed. And I shouldn't even say the word back down because I don't see it as a demotion. And I think that for so long... He can move, he can move to NXT's roster at the end of the day. I think at the end of the day, what would actually even kind of make things better for everyone is if you combined all three brands or, or not combined but allowed people made it easier to move around yeah and, and to not treat NXT like a demotion because a lot of the times I think that NXT is a better quality show than the others you know what's funny you remember Dolph Ziggler and Robert Roode were down in NXT and they were having more fun down there and they were on the main roster yeah they and I think they're having so much fun. and I think it gives an opportunity for talents that they may have pushed too quickly to actually be able to make an impact I'll make an example Mandy and Rose I, Mandy yes. Rose is a perfect example exactly <laughs> um, because she would have been lost on the main roster she would have been running around for the 24-7 championship like like she would have been a Dana Brooke like let's be serious here I mean, she was with Dana Brooke before she... Wait, wait, who? The 24-7 champion, Dana Brooke. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Also, can we get rid of that championship? Uh, well, is it, oh, is it, please. Can you believe it's been around for three please. years already? It's been around for three years. Three years too long. Please. I cannot believe that belt's been around so long. I don't know, I don't know what's more shocking, that belt being around three years and Raw being three hours for ten. I'm not figuring that which was much crazier. I'll be, I'll be honest. When they basically ended NXT Black and Gold and came out with NXT 2.0, I was not a fan at first, but as I got to watch the product, I think we had to grow into it. That's why we had to grow into the characters. They they have now made me into a fan of so it. So the biggest thing is wrestling fans don't like change. Obviously, they don't, and I think that's a big reason why things have remained stagnant for a while is because they don't want to rock the boat. They don't want to take the title off of Roman's reigns because they don't want to see what the reaction will be. Because obviously everyone will always have their favorites. You never want your favorites to lose. Well, unfortunately, life sucks. and People lose all the time. That's how it works. They need to learn how to respectfully rock the boat, bring in new talent, and allow others to grow. Well, and wrestling fans also need to realize that things cannot remain the same forever and that there will always be this continuous growth. There will always be this cycle of bringing in new talent, losing old talent. And the other thing to keep in well, mind is if you rely on the same people all of the time, and they've learned this the hard way with, uh, with the whole Cody situation, when people get injured, you have to have a backup plan, mm -hmm. and you have to have a backup plan that makes sense, not just throwing a Carmella at, at the match because you can. Like what happened in AW, at least they had John Moxley ready yes. to go, and he was ready to go, he, he, and well, having the Blackpool Combat Club was perfect. And, and, mm -hmm. and here's an example of what we're talking about next to point is the storyline of Cameron Grimes. True. Everyone followed it, especially when Ted DiBiase became involved. And, and you watched that storyline. You wanted to see where it was going to end. And you wanted Cameron to come on on top. What? Especially against L.A. Knight. Oh, I miss L.A. Knight. No, no, not Matt So, I mean, Dupree. I have Stop to it. give credit creative. The storylines in NXT <laughs> have gotten better and gotten to be continuous. The, not that they're kind of the disjointed and broken. The one thing NXT has always done well, whether it be Black and Gold or 2.0, is they've been able to build something 
from nothing. They've been True. able to yep. bring, like a Cameron Grimes. If you would have told me when he started that I would have cared about him, I would never have believed you. I but remember they last summer me. we were watching NXT. We were, we were in Florida. We were watching NXT. Yes. And mm -hmm. we're like, are we really cheering for Cameron yeah. Grimes? Like, how they, did this happen? They, they, make, they make you invested in someone, whether you dislike them or like them, but they give them a storyline, and it's a continuous storyline. It doesn't end well, abruptly. Like, it doesn't have these weird... Even if they're call-ups, they still finish their stories. Like, exactly. I'll last year two times. Like, <laughs> Tommaso Ciampa and Johnny Gargano. Yes. That and may have got you long enough. That may have got you long Yeah. <laughs> but at the same time, that is what Raw and SmackDown needs to learn to do better. And I think Raw is better creative in storylines than SmackDown. I can give that credit. Well, Be SmackDown feels like the Roman Reigns show. If he's the not thing, there, it's not a great show. If you don't have the bloodline on the show... What do you have a show? We're saying the same thing. We are saying the exact same thing. Yeah, there. <laughs> you, you don't you don't have a show. But once again, it comes back to WWE created that monster, and now they're trying to figure out how to kill the monster. Good luck. The only thing that I can see, if you want to kill Roman off, him versus Rock and WrestleMania, and Rock kicks his ass. Why are you trying to kill Roman? I don't want we just him dead. I just want, we just kill I, him off two dimes. What are you doing? I just want him. <laughs> I just want him to have less TV time. I don't want him to die. That's the way to do it. Have his, have the can, Rock in the family kick you, Roman's ass. Can you stop talking about a man who's had cancer and wanting him to die? Stop it. Two just, times, by the way. Two times. <laughs> have someone within his family just take it away from him and say, "Hey, it's been nice. You've been an asshole. Wait, Goodbye." Tell the other man Rogers in. So yes. I, th so the other thing that I would have liked to have seen is I, if you're going to have the bloodline, I would like to have seen them grow. Obviously, you can add Solo Sokoa in there. I would have loved to have seen Naomi. I don't think she's on the roster anymore. From yes, I recently. know. But yeah. I, at that point, I still would have loved to see them have some kind of a woman's presence. If you're going to have them be dominant, you need to have them be fully dominant, and you need to have them have the U.S. belt and a woman's belt. Mm -hmm. But uh, Because then I feel like it's the Bloodline show with, with special, special guest Gunther. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, again, like... Okay. If you're going to tell me a story, I need you to tell me the entire story and not just the beginning and maybe the end, and I have to figure out the middle myself. Okay. Let me throw this at you. What if Tamina gets involved in the bloodline? See, well, that, she is part of the family. Technically, that, that, part would of the family. Be, that would be natural. And then Naomi comes back because she's pissed. No, Naomi's not going to come back. Let's take no Naomi out of the picture. Okay. But like, I expect to see Mercedes Renato in AW soon or Impact soon. But, but the thing is, is Tamina, that is the epitome of an underutilized talent who mm -hmm. needed to be with someone else in order to get her chance. Do you feel Raquel is also going to be lost in the shuffle? I don't know. I That's hope a question. not. That's a question, actually. I mean, from everything she did in NXT, and now she's in SmackDown. But all she's doing is she's on television. I, I would, she's on I TV would, every week. I would love her to be in the hunt for the belt. But my issue is, is now that Money in the Bank is over and you don't need to have six women, seven women in a match, you're going to en end up having people that are going to get lost in the shuffle again. You're going to have like a Shotzi who's not going to get any TV time anymore. Um, and I'm afraid that that might happen to Raquel as well. Well, at least with Ronda, at least she was bringing people out to have matches. But like she was having matches with Shotzi and Raquel and now Liv and... But she's actually try it's true on the credit, at least she was trying. What I okay, see. Uh, but I think you're giving her a little too much credit. She she's just showed she, she showed up to work and did what they told her to do. The funny okay. part is though, because Rhonda's contract, she doesn't so, have a wrestling back down if they don't want to. She doesn't so want to. Here's you know I see. How do I get a contract like that? How do these people not work that much and get paid more than that? <laughs> I know it's terrible. Like Brock. <laughs> oh, I was saying Rhonda. But, Rhonda's the purpose of the that. Like here's they the thing. film a promo and make more than I do in an entire year. Here's it's the ridiculous. Thing. I see Raquel. Not challenging wrong. Liv for the title. I really do. That'd be fun. That'd be a fun match. Not gonna lie. That'd be, I'd be in and you know, to I, bring I, this up for you, honey, go for it. where do you put Bailey in when she finally decides she wants to start wrestling again? Uh, well, she's put her in First of all, down. I have heard she is in the performance center training. Okay, she is good. back in the performance center. I heard that recently. Um, there's pictures of her at the performance center. So that's exciting. Um, put her in raw. Uh, please put her in raw. She's saying that. You, you brought up the Bianca she, I, but. I still would like to see Bianca and Bailey finish their storyline from before. From a year and a half ago. From before Bailey got But at the same time, if they keep the belt on Liv, Liv Bailey is a perfect for SmackDown. They can use that if you don't SmackDown big time. But as I'm afraid over on Raw, you're stuck with Bianca and Becky again. <laughs> so, like, I'm not sure what you do there. I think it's time to have a draft. That's out in October. 
It's October. I that, and, mm-hmm. and I think you send. You got to tie it in with the Caesar Ramirez SmackDown. Becky over to SmackDown. You got to tie it in with the Caesar Ramirez SmackDown in October. By the way. So, all right. Um, we are reaching the end of everything. I do want to bring up two things real fast. Go ahead. If you told me a year ago or two years ago that about a month ago Impact Wrestling was celebrating its 20th anniversary, I would never believe you. Neither <laughs> would, would I. Would never believe you. The cockroaches of wrestling. I can't believe it, that they're still going and they're getting better. They're actually getting better, which is unreal well, to me. They're, they're, like they had them they, this week. I haven't had to watch yet. They headline with Mia Yim versus Deanna Perrazzo, which is insane to me. That their women's division is better than any division in the, the in the world. Yeah, I mean the women's and division their show is there. Bright. It's weird. The women's division there is really it, it, it kicks ass. And uh, honestly, I feel like WWE and AEW need to take some hints and tricks from the impact wrestling women's division because Mm -hmm. not only is it stacked but these women are all getting as close to equal time as possible like you're highlighting these women and no one has to step aside you know it's funny adding to your point back and if you remember that one week where almost every match was all women with all women except for like andre chase the other thing on that it was all women we've never seen that and and eventually i would love for it to happen where that happens and no one is celebrating it because it's normal actually it wasn't even celebrated it was brought up on 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 next podcast it was brought up but no one even noticed it It was like oh wow that happened that's pretty cool that's pretty cool and (laughs) i I, I would like for eventually there to be an all women's pay-per-view where we don't don't need the pomp and circumstance and everyone to just celebrate. Just do it. Just do it. Just do it. And yes. because you have the talent, you have the ability to. And it, it, I'm. It shouldn't just be women's wrestling and men's wrestling. It should just be wrestling. wrestling. And if you have that many women and you have that many women who are able to perform, then you should allow them to have a stage where they can do so, just like the men. Before we run out of time, I want to mention quickly about New Japan wrestling. Okay. That's the thing I was going to bring up. Good. Okay. Good timing. Mm-hmm. Is I think when you mention that people have somewhat are, are somewhat confused, but here's the thing: Tony's bringing a product. Let me ask you a question about okay, Japan. Go ahead. Actually, go ahead. did Forbidden Door help? Did it actually help or just confuse people? Okay, me personally, I know I, you're, you're a New Japan person. Okay, but I, I have more but, for you. Okay. Did New Japan help? Did, did Forbidden Door help? Do you have any interest in New Japan? Did you even saw you're in person and you saw like me freak out about Okada and him freak out about Tanahashi, our yes. son freaking out about so, Osprey. Uh, uh, well, like, again, <laughs> it just it turns into at some point I can only handle so much. Well, like for instance, if I'm watching the G1, if I'm watching the G1, will you sit and watch the G1 if I'm watching? If I'm watching, will I sit and watch every match? No, I'm like, I don't know if I'm gonna be paying attention every single match. We got vacation in the middle of everything, but like. Would you watch the G1 matches with me if I'm watching it? If I happen to know one of the guys, sure, maybe. Okay. So you're the perfect example of it because you're the one that's like, you're not a New Japan person. So I was curious. But I always be curious about it. Like, how did you come out of it at all? At some points, I was confused. At other points, some of it made sense. Um, but the one thing is, is there were a couple of matches that everyone didn't think were going to make sense that ended up making the most sense. Osprey for and Art Cassidy. Yes. Oh, perfect. That was a great match. Jay White. Great match. Well, Jay White, I bet you expected that match to yeah. be good. But, but like the Osprey, Art Cassidy, might be one right. of the best matches of the whole show. If anything, but, it was it was a good showcase mm-hmm. to show everyone that there is life outside of AEW and WWE. Well, the other thing is, is that Tony's bringing in a product that most people don't have access to. Well, ironically, it's not access, ironically. <laughs> right, you know, it, 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 that's not a regular program that's on television, that's mm-hmm. on cable. So he's bringing a, a product in for people to see, hey, this is what this company can do. Why don't you take a look and see, they've got a whole slew of talent that you're gonna be amazed at. The, I will say one thing for the next Written Door show, because you know there will be another one. You know there will be, because oh, it was definitely. successful. It was a, don't spend your entire pause storylines just to do that. Like, for instance, they're doing Ring of Honor pay-per-view at the end of this month. They're not pausing other storylines <laughs> to do Ring of Honor storylines now on TV. They're saying, these are the matches happening. We'll talk about them. Maybe we'll do something on Rampage. But this is the show. If you're interested, find the show. And this is what they're doing. I feel like in Japan, you could have done the same thing with Forbidden Door. And nobody would have questioned it because it was Forbidden Door and everyone was going to watch it anyway. People were going to watch it, we were going to watch it, no matter what they did on TV. <laughs> yeah. So, um, one last thing. I do want to bring up the G1. Mm-hmm. Okay. And our son's going to be very happy. Why? Because I'm my pick for the G1 this year is going to be Wasper. I think it's his time to main event the D on Wrestle Kingdom against Jay White. 
And I think it's going to be that's going to be the main event of Wrestle Kingdom Night One. Is that sucks. You know what I mean? What are you thinking, Will Osprey or somebody else on there? I I I'd probably say they're giving a big push to Osprey, and I wouldn't surprise me if that would happen. But in the same breath, do you overlook? Tanahashi, do you overlook yeah, Okada? Do well, you, Tanahashi, you, Okada's not going to be in the final. His wife's going to be giving birth. And Tanahashi's yeah. old. <laughs> and Japan I mean, standards. you overlook someone like Ishii and things Again, like that. Again, old. <laughs> That's because you like them. Does not mean they're not old in Japan. <laughs> Let's be honest okay, here. Okay. <laughs> and again, you have to you have to be able to bring up new talent if you want. I think the G one's always been great about. Exactly. You're always something new. Like I never heard of Tanada until a couple of years ago when he was in the G one final. Like I never heard of the guy. And I'm like, oh, okay, awesome. If, well, awesome. If you Red shoes son. There you go. He's a new guy. If well, he's actually feuding. He's actually matched against Pac on Dark for the um, All Atlantic. There you go. If you give the people the same all the time, they're going to expect that, and that's going to become the norm. Right. So you're and going to want to switch things up so that people can. Be and continuously be on their feet. And that's why Tony does it, because you never know what's going to happen next. So, let's wrap things up here. Any other final thoughts you want to bring up about the wrestling scene, honey? Um, I, I guess I just remember that it's, at the end of the day, it is sports entertainment. And there are certain things that keep people entertained. And, you know, at the risk of sounding cheesy, like, the Kevin Owens storyline, like mm-hmm. it's stupid. It, I will be the first to admit it's stupid, but for some reason, everyone is very invested in it. And now I want to meet Elrod. <laughs> um, a, has there been pictures of Elrod? No, okay, any final thoughts before we wrap up? Mm-hmm. Uh, I just want uh, storylines to be better, to be. Have have an end, beginning and ending, and not be disjointed. And all of a sudden, you stop in the middle of something, and, but you don't continue it yep. for some reason. That's why I want creative to be better to with, be with with character uh-huh. gimmicks. I want creative to be creative. That's a good yeah, point. There, there, there you go. That's great. And I will say one last thing: I want wrestling fans to chill out. It's all wrestling. You don't have to walk every. You don't have to like everyone. Doesn't have to like everything. But don't give people crap. If you're a WWE person, you don't like AEW. Stop giving people crap for that. I'm so sick and tired of it. It's pro wrestling. At the end of the day, I'm just. We're all we're all wrestling fans. At the end of the day, we all watch wrestling to get rid of the The shit Mm -hmm. of the normal world. So let's not bring that shit into the wrestling world. Exactly. Here's the thing: you have different organizations you can watch. If you're not happy with the one, I 100% turn agree. the station and watch something else. And don't just go to consider and complain about it. All right. That wrap things up. For um, people in the audience that stick around, thank you so much for sticking around with us. Um, you can hear us every single Friday on all podcasting platforms. It's like a sound show with Mark. We usually have my buddy Sal, who lives in Jersey, mm-hmm. and we do our show every single Friday. And next couple weeks will be all con coverage, but we'll still do a great show. Um, Honey, you want to plug your book one more time for people here? Uh, I know I am. It's a children's book about body positivity. Please check it out on Amazon. And there you go. It's been your pleasure that I've been here. And uh, please, if you have a local independent wrestling organization where you live, patronize them. These are the young men and women that are coming up in the world of pro wrestling, sports entertainment. <laughs> you want to get that brass ring to go to a better company and show you what they can do. And you'll be amazed at what these people can do in the independent wrestling circuits. These guys give them 110%. So go patronize these people, please. Oh, oh so. we're done. We're done. All right. And um, for those on the podcast side, we'll see you all next week. Thank you all for listening. Oh. Oh. I'm Blake. I'm Mark. I'm Andy. And you've been listening to The Blake and Sal Show with Mark live at FedEx from Chicago. Have a good day, everybody. You're despicable.